Max here. In this video, we'll be covering bitmap text and tile maps. Before anything else, I should point out that at the time of this video being uploaded, the objects that are covered in this video are considered experimental. This is just because there's still additional testing and features that would like to be added to these objects later down the road. In the meantime, you can still access them by clicking the Show Experimental Objects button at the bottom of the Objects window. And of course, if you run into any issues with these objects, definitely let us know your feedback. Let's first take a look at bitmap text. For all intents and purposes, you can basically think of bitmap text as a normal text that requires a special bitmap text font file. If you're not already familiar with the text object, definitely check out our video on that. Anyway, these bitmap text font files have to be generated with a special software. And you can check out the link in the description for a list of some suggestions. This allows you to do to the text whatever you can in an image editor. And for this reason, one of the main use cases for bitmap text is full stylization. Bitmap text is also significantly more performant than standard text, so they are a good choice if you are very concerned about performance. Finally, the bitmap text format gives you full control over the resolution of your font. So if you need to scale into your text, then this is the option for you. As for the object properties, most of them are pretty straightforward and just the same as with the normal text object. Just make sure to select your FNT file as well as your actual Atlas PNG file. If you forget one, it will not render. One last thing to keep in mind, it's a good idea to include some padding when you actually export your font file, as this can potentially help reduce unwanted rendering artifacts later down the line. Next, we'll take a look at the tile map object. This allows you to import tile maps you've made using a software called Tiled. So I'm not going to get super in depth on how to use Tiled since it's really its own thing, but you can still check out the description for some excellent resources on learning Tiled. Anyways, conceptually, the idea here is that you have now a single image, which is your tile map, and you'll build all of your interactable objects and enemies on top of that. There is an excellent guide on the wiki for how to use GDevelop with Tiled, uh, but if you hate reading, like I do, then here are the most important things to keep in mind. First of all, GDevelop only supports orthogonal map types. It also does not support Z standard compression at this time, so keep that in mind. And when you go to make your tile set, you need to either embed it in your current map, or if you don't, you're going to need to manually include it in the tile map object. Finally, you'll need to export all of your tile maps and tile sets to JSON before you can actually import them into GDevelop. You'll also need to select the Atlas image, which is just the image you used for your tile set. One last thing I'll mention here is collisions. At the time of this video, they're not supported. However, hopefully by the time you're watching this video, they are. At any rate, in the meantime, you can implement collisions yourself by creating your own collision tiles. This is where you create an object the size of a tile that acts as a collision boundary for enemies and characters. This can then be layered on top of your tile map, and you can hide this at runtime either by hiding a layer or hiding them in the actions. So this has been bitmap fonts and tile maps. If you have any questions or feedback, be sure to let us know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.